Hello everyone, my name is PJ and this is my friend Tyler and welcome to 2PM 2 Amnesia, The, the Dark, Dark Descent. Descent. Yep, this was uh, the first game that we tried to do a 2P Let's Play of, but the sound got all fucked up and we had to discard everything. It, yes. And we didn't want to repeat all the same commentary again right away, so we just decided to put it on hold until it was fresh again. And luckily, in the time we go back to play it, it's around Halloween, so it just kind of works. Yeah. Uh, it's October. Yes. Yep, so we're just gonna start a new game. Oh, by the way, the developers want you to know that this game should not be played to win. <laughs> and that you should just focus on immersing yourself in the rich worlds and environments. It's it's so ridiculous. It's like they're admitting that they have a poorly designed game. It's ridiculous. Start new game. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Bit of bit of history. When Amnesia first came out, pretty much everyone on the internet was talking about how it was supposedly the scariest game ever. And of course, the namesake of the game comes into play right away. Which is good. Uh, honestly, I like the entire way that little intro part works, because it's very... Ooh, what the heck's going on? Yeah, basically, like, he knows he's, um, like, gaining amnesia. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to remember important things. But really, all he ends up remembering is his name, really. Pretty much. So. But yeah, and uh, what's very cool is it starts out here, you actually get a very direct... Uh, you know, follow the drips. You know, that's... So it works out pretty well for you. Yeah, J is for journal. And right about here, we're just gonna crash onto the floor. Just gonna take a nap. That's fine. Well, back in the day, though, this game was viewed as being, like, legitimately scary. And I will give it that. For the time period it came out, it was. It was a scary game. Uh, it's just that over time, as you played it more... Well, here's the thing. I never watched Markiplier play the original Amnesia uh, before I played it myself. I only ever watched him play custom stories. And some of those were terrifying. But then I played the original Amnesia for myself, completely blind, on my own. And I wasn't scared at all. There was one jump scare that got me, and it wasn't even from an enemy. Yeah, but I'm just saying that when I was I was pretty young when this game when did this game come out? This game came out in 2009. 2009. I don't know. I mean, I was younger then compared to now. Let's put it that way. And you know, I remember people talking and talking and talking about this this game and just how how terrifying it was. And I remember like the, the, one thing that was scary about it was the monsters' designs. You know, th those were actually very well done, and I will I will give it that. Whatever they're called. The, Grunts. Grunts, yeah. They are very, very scary looking, and I do I do think that that's the case. Not as scary as the Moosh Man, though. The Moosh Man. Or the Kerink, the Water Monster. Yeah, the Kerink. I do I called. do love the Kerink. Oh, here we go. Okay. Just gonna start crawling around the floor now. Just don't mind me. Uh, the first time we did this in our test footage, uh, we actually fell through the wall, <laughs> and that was pretty funny. Uh, and I will give it this, too. The game still looks great. Graphically, the, the textures are really, really fantastic. Uh, it's really hard for a game, especially in this style, this medieval, like, grungy look, to actually remain good-looking for so long. Because this game takes place, like, around the uh, late 1800s. Mm-hmm. And, um, what was it? Was it Germany? And I think I've told you this before, um, that I never watched a single custom story. Outside, I watched one. I watched one custom story. Uh, Which one? It was, oh, jeez, what was it called? I didn't watch Markiplier play it. I watched uh, Vine Sauce Vinny play it. It was um, the happiest Amnesia mod ever, I think it was called. Oh. Yeah. And it was a great mod. But... Yeah, but basically how this all works is um, you have a sanity system, 
and Daniel here, the stupid little fucker, is afraid of the dark. <laughs> so the more time you spend in the dark, the more your sanity drains. And this is your inventory menu. We have four tinder boxes, which you can use to light candles and shit. We don't have oil, but this is what that's for, is an oil meter. Mm -hmm. This heart is your health, always good. And this is your sanity, you have a slight headache. Kinda like me right now, I have a migraine. <laughs> but I just took some relief for it, so it should go away soon. Honestly, uh, it is strange how this game is supposed to be built on like the concept of insanity, but there's very little that actually seems to bring about the, those, the insanity, you know? Yeah, and the effects of insanity are always the same. Things get blurrier, you hear bugs in your ear, and when your sanity drains completely, you fall unconscious for like 10 seconds. Yeah. And then you're completely healed. Yeah, but when we when we get to our first monster, we'll, we'll tell you exactly why this game is so poorly designed. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll bring that up uh, when we get there. So the whole message in the game says, for, you know, to immerse yourself in the world. I, I, I get why they put that there. I know why. But really, why would why didn't they just update the game later to make it so it doesn't work like that? You know? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. Because I think maybe they really wanted people to see the story. So there were some fail safes put into the game to make it so that you could see the story. No matter how bad you were at it. Yeah, but I'm just saying the, the way that they the way they put it into place though just completely like undermines all the abilities you have. Like the like hiding and stuff is not even useful. Except like in two circumstances. But that's enough about complaining about the game. In, in all honesty, the game itself is not bad. It is actually a very very good horror game. Uh because at the very least it has it has a really nice identity. It plays exceptionally well. Okay, got our lantern. Mm -hmm. And the longer you have your lantern out, the more of your oil drains. And oil is pretty limited, so try and use your lantern as sparingly as possible. This game also came out, like, in the... How do I put this? The Half-Life 2 days, where it's all based on physics. Yeah, th th this was one of the first indie games that really made a splash. Yeah. I, I wouldn't... Well... The first indie game to really make a big splash in the computer, mar computer market was Minecraft, but yeah, how, how when did Minecraft come out? I don't know. Like, yeah. I want to say no earlier than 2006. Yeah, something like that. I have no... No, it had to have been later than that, because Minecraft came out around the time that you first told me about it. Yeah, I actually had to, like, uh, kind of force you into playing Minecraft, I remember. No, you didn't force me into it. I got into it myself after you told me about ah, it. Ah, okay. But it's so weird, like, how much Minecraft influenced uh, the gaming the gaming landscape, you know? Now there's so many Minecraft clones, there's including so Terraria, which now has its own clones. Yeah, but Terraria itself at least was different enough to have its own identity. Oh, also, this is the part where the camera forces you to look at the desk a lot. Yeah. Hey, look at this. This is how you progress. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. I don't know why he writes like the new him is like a different person. Or it basically is. He doesn't have any of his old memories except for his name. But he assumed that he would remember his name. Like, why? Did, how was he able to assume that? 
I guess he was just really hoping. Okay. I mean, it would... I mean, I mean, generally, when people gain amnesia, one of the only things they remember, if any, is their name. Well, actually, here's a good point. Did he drip the potion on purpose? Like, did he walk all that way just to leave a trail so that they would walk back and take the note? Is that why he did that? I don't know why Daniel went all the way back to the front door of the castle. I legitimately do not know. Well, I think I think what I just said is a good is a good thing. Actually, I think it's a good guess because if if Daniel's smart enough to know, because you're like, oh, what's this? You follow it. You know, if you have amnesia, you know, you don't know what else to do. So you're gonna, you're gonna follow something, right? Mm, I guess it might be the case. I mean, because the way into the rest of the castle was to pull that lever. Yeah. And if he'd woken up in that room, he may not have found the lever and went off wandering around somewhere else. Exactly. Right. But it would have taken the same amount of time, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, well, never mind. Well, he didn't want him himself leaving the castle, that's for sure. So he had to find some way to lead himself back into the inside of the castle. Yeah, can I run yet? There we go. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenberg. That's, that's the one uh, downfall to using this as a uh, Let's Play series, though, is there's a lot of dialogue and a lot of interruptions from gameplay. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of, like, we play for, like, a few minutes, and then we watch a scene, then we play for a few minutes and watch a scene. I felt to see how that's the downfall. Well, it just, it just makes the, uh, the Let's Play experience a little more slow. Because you're like, you know, you know, you can't really comment on stuff in the scenes you're playing, you know. So, just let the people hear the cutscene. I mean, because I can't tell you how many times people have talked over cutscenes in Let's Plays. And I'm just like, shut up! I'm trying to listen! Well, play the game yourself. Then you know what they say. What's what's the, that's, that's kind of what you do. You can't always play the game yourself, you know. Like, what if it's a brand new game that you can't afford? Well, then the Let's Play itself should be more of an advertisement to buy the game, shouldn't it? That's kind of the way most people advertise it. What if you're perpetually poor and you have no plans to ever buy games? Well, then you're not really supporting the people in the games, so... I mean, they're just, they're no, they're about no, they have no value to you now. I mean, you're, you have no value to them anymore, right? That's the way business works. <laughs> but no, I get your point. Yes, if you, if you can't ever get the game, then like the only way you can experience is through Let's Plays, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I, I mean, understand. There are a lot of people who only watch Let's Plays and never play games, like mm -hmm. my sister. Yeah. I understand that. I'm just saying, in my, in my personal experience, I would prefer to, you know, just play. Get, get, get through that stuff. But me and you are very different in that respect anyway. I think I mentioned this when we were playing it originally, back in the day, uh, that the um, the tinder boxes are like more like tinder cups. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why aren't they reusable? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to use all of the supplies contained within this thing to light a single torch. <laughs> I love that line. Let me see. Let me see. And one part aquifers. Yeah, but I forget what game it was. It was some kind of MMO where there was an item description that referenced uh, that line. Uh, there should be more coop, right? Was it a World of Warcraft thing? I don't know. I honestly do not know. I'll look it up and put a caption. Early alchemy experiment. This is my third attempt to produce artificial vitae. The former compounds lack the potency I need, but I sense I'm close. Calamine and orbiment are a given, and the cuprite binds them well. This time I will attempt aqua regia instead of aqua fortis, and hope it will produce a more even solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. The solution is highly acid. You mean acidic? And proves impractical to put to any use except as a detergent. Organic tissue reacts especially violently to the solution and should be handled with the greatest care. 
I might be able to use the recipe, but I'm losing hope that I will find an alchemic solution to my predicament. Uh, so basically, it's just a note telling you what ingredients you need to find. Yeah, so we start... This is basically the first puzzle of the game. Uh, there is the... Uh, what's it called again? Karenk. The Karenk, yeah. Yeah, you see splashing, but you don't see what's making the splashing. Yep. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, but our goal here is to basically make a solution uh, using this uh, chemical tool over here. Chemical relocation. The lack of a chimney to properly vent the fumes from my most recent experiment has taken its toll on many of my less stable ingredients in storage. Some seem unaffected, but many are stained by the fumes and will be difficult to salvage. I shall do what I can to move them to the wine cellar. Okay, so... Put that... Take this and put there. it... There. Oh. No? Uh, sometimes it's really finicky. There we go. Yeah, so we gotta find four? Yep, four yep. different ingredients. And then note we just read said that many of them, if not all of them, are in the wine cellar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let us go to the wine cellar. The cellar of wine. The door slammed shut behind him and he knew he would never again see the old tailor at Berkeley Square. Another lung... Uh, ah. <laughs> I really wish it would just let you... Another flashback? Yeah, all those voices that you hear are just... Daniel having flashbacks until they suddenly aren't. <laughs> it doesn't make it apparent. Did I find the key? No, I didn't. So the wine cellar is still locked. Where else are we supposed to even go? The stairs. The stars? I just realized it's 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 daytime outside. Yeah? Oh. When does it, does it isn't it like nighttime later? It's like does the time shift over like actively? I don't know, because you spend most of the game underground. I, I think it remains daytime for most of the game, actually. Okay. I don't know if it ever becomes night. Well, I, I remember there's a part where you go outside, though, and I'm pretty sure that's at nighttime. I don't think there's any part where you can go outside. Yes, there is. There's a flashback where you can control yourself out outside. No, no, no. You, there's a part where you go onto a uh, you go onto a balcony. Do you remember that? Oh, you mean just okay? Yeah. N not on the ground. No, but no. But outside. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. That's what you meant. Yes, yes. Why? Well, what I said wasn't wrong. Technically, but I thought you meant like you stand on the grass or something. <laughs> Wilhelm's contract. I hereby offer my full attention and services to Alexander, Baron of Brennenberg. This contract will reign for a total of three years, and my freedom shall return to me. In addition. Alexander, Baron of Brennenberg, is to recommend my services at the Prussian royal court and within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break this seal. Wilhelm, House of Garrick. Garrick. Now, the Order of the Black Eagle is only very loosely referred to here and there. And there is a custom story based on it. I think it's, I think it's called Grey Eagle. I forget. Anyway, I think it's dark enough in here that, yeah, we're being driven insane. I need my lantern out. Yeah, any sort of doors or anything, you have to actually physically, like, move the mouse in yeah. certain directions. Yeah, like, I grab this with the left mouse button and then move the camera to the right. And that opens it up. Yeah. Well, not the camera, just the mouse. I guess it locks the camera in place. Yeah, but it basically runs the same first-person physics kind of stuff where um, your character just seemingly has uh, telekinesis. Yeah, like in Elder Scrolls. Yeah. You just pick up things. Even though you clearly have a hand. Yeah. And you could totally use, but whatever. Well, it would be hard to animate. You're picking up all the different random stuff, so it makes sense they do it that way. And some of the custom stories have custom hands, just so that, you know, you don't think you're still Daniel. But most of them look hideous. Later that evening, 
we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. What I do like is that the the, the readings that are made, you actually see the note in the back. It, the stuff is actually written on the note, which is very, very cool. Is it, though? Yes, it is. I've checked. It, it may be hard to tell sometimes with how fancy the writing is, but yes, the writing does match with what's being spoken. Hmm. Surprised you never noticed that before. I always thought it was just a generic piece of paper with illegible scribbles on it. Well you'll, well, you'll notice that every time you get a note, it's new. It's different. Like, the actual note in the background is different. So there's a, there's a lot of extra work they put in there for, for a bit of the... That immersion they so desperately wanted you to have, huh? If they bothered writing it, why not just, you know, let you read the writing? Because a lot of it's, well, I mean, a lot of people have trouble reading cursive like me. So. Yeah, I suppose. Did you not learn cursive in school? I learned cursive, yes. But I've used it so sparingly now that I've basically forgotten how to write in cursive. So. What do you sign in? That's the only thing I remember how to write, is my name. I mean, I've, uh, I can, I can word, I can figure it out. Like I can write stuff. It just takes some extra time. But oh, yeah. you do get mementos and stuff. Yeah. You can find the key for the wine cellar. The door leading to the local history room is locked. Is there another entrance? You basically never need to read those. And notes, you can reread those. Yeah. Continue. Oh. Um. Anyway. Um. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I just I lost my train of thought for a second because because I'm now I'm doubting myself about the whole fucking note thing because like I'm starting to remember that maybe some of them are generic. No, oh, we can look at the notes. Yeah, because like I'm I'm thinking that some of them might be might be generic. Because can you even read that? Because I can't. I can't really read it, but it doesn't look like it matches this text. Okay. Okay, may, maybe it's just some of them then. But I do remember that when I played this game, and last time we played this, there are at least some that are. Some. But again, hey, I don't know something. Is that really a surprise at this point? <laughs> no, it's not a surprise. Do they ever hide anything in the piano key cases? In the original Amnesia, I don't think so. And I can only recall one custom story where they ever hid anything in one. Why are you even lighting the, the, the lanterns? Because if you don't use the tender boxes, then you'll never use the tender boxes. Just, 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 they just never come up. Up. Looks like we're trapped in here now. Why is there so many tender boxes in this house anyway? Wasn't that just how they kept things lit? Well, yeah, but like, in real life, a tender box doesn't get used in one one use. So, like, you'd think there'd be about fewer. Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty-nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the fourth century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it. And as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped 
sealing me inside. I was trapped. Yeah, so basically, Daniel was some kind of archaeologist. And he was in, what was it, Nigeria? Somewhere around there. Yeah, exploring some ancient tomb. Now, I was thinking about maybe why a lot of, uh, you know, Let's Players, other stuff like that, maybe do talk over cutscenes on purpose. And uh, wouldn't you think that maybe that it might just be a thing for copyright? Like, as long as we're talking over it, it's good for, like, saving you? Much of the castle is old and hasn't been tended to for centuries. When the shadow arrives, it won't take long until things start falling apart. We're just buying time anyway. Let's do what we can. There isn't much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Yeah. To answer your question, there was two kinds of copyright strikes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's the kind that are either made... Chest. I, I see it, I see I'm talking. There's the kind that are actually like either made by real companies, which who are dicks, like Viacom. And then there are the fake kind that, you know, like... Are picked up by the automated system. Oh, no, 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 not that. That's the second kind I was talking about. I'm still talking about the first kind. Like, they just get taken down by somebody, manually. Whether it's a bot or a troll or an actual company. Okay, that's not heavy enough. Let's try a rock. Or... A helmet? A helmet might work. Okay. Somehow. Oh. The second kind is the automated stuff. Oh, hold on. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Dan. Hmm. Excuse me. Yeah. And that's just a hint on how to solve this puzzle. But yeah, the automated stuff, most of the time, all the automated stuff does is prevent you from monetizing your video. Like... I had no intention of monetizing the last episode of my off Let's Play because I knew that somewhere over the rainbow would play over it. And unlike other Let's Players who just replaced it with a different song, I didn't want to do that. So I just left the video unmonetized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if YouTube detects copyrighted stuff, like something as big as somewhere over the rainbow, it just demonetizes the video. And. <laughs> I don't really care about that. <laughs> Local folklore. I'm going to read this in the way in the episode. Allstadt and Brennenburg Castle, 1801. Another region rich with lore is Allstadt, deep within the East Prussian woods. For centuries there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbor, Castle Brennenburg. The quiet, forest-clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque as can be, albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. How do you get proof of a superstition? All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations since it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists in the tales, but there are some motifs that keep reappearing. The Gatherers. This story reaches all the way back to the time of the Thirty Years' War. It is said that soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold dark woods and were forever damned to roam the grounds. Their bodies wrought by their tainted souls have left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have sighted them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. Wonder if we'll see any of those. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers as they seem to follow some ambition to steal living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap sacks dragged behind them which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? A visit undone. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. Remember that name? The well-known erudite? Erudite? Yeah. Visited Alstar at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for remnants of kingdom's past. 
During his stay, all the prominent members of society paid notice, and he is mentioned in many records of the time. One day he went to investigate a borough in the northwestern glades only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Alstadt, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who was this mysterious man who visited the sleepy hamlet in the woods, and what happened to him? The Immortal Baron The Baron of Brennenburg lives a reclusive life with his family in his castle nearby Alstadt, and like most those of noble birth, rumors are inherited alongside with the title. Researching the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands, claiming the role as protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region to flourish and remained popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to lineage and heritage, therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully recorded. Uh, so people think he's dead. Mm -hmm. This has fed the idea that the Baron is in fact the one and the same who came from the West over 300 years ago, lived through the time of occupation, and joined the coveted Order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of this country. So, people think that he's immortal just because he seems to exist in multiple time periods. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's going to be where we end this episode. Lots of reading, lots of cutscenes. Yep. But, well, uh, that won't be ending anytime soon. Yep, so... Thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate it. If you want to support us on Patreon, there'll be an end card at the end of the video and a link in the description below alongside links to Tyler's Twitch account and our social media. I don't know how to advertise it. Yep. <laughs> so, we'll see you all in the next video. See you guys. Oh, come on, no. Don't make it disappear. No! Fuck! Who did that? Who did that? I'm gonna fucking murder them. Break one of my own goddamn commandments.